the worst thing about this location for an outfall is its safety. The bad foundation conditions, the very high flow that's coming in here is a sort of perfect storm. What it creates is a situation which is almost certain to fail. We are standing just at beside the South Platte River, Globeville's across to our left, and I-70 runs through 46th Avenue, just in front of us here, and the rest of Denver, the east side of Denver, runs off to our right, and we are actually standing right on top of the existing outfall at Globeville Landing, which comes from Denver, and you can see if we turn around these three uh, uh, concrete uh, outlets, that water comes across here through another outlet which we are standing on top of and discharges into the South Platte River right underneath where we're standing. And, and so the plan is to greatly increase the size of this system so it will handle a hundred year storm our current system doesn't handle a hundred year storm, at least not from the areas to the east of here, specifically the Montclair Basin, which is the main one in Denver, which drains a good chunk of eastern Denver, and that drainage will, today, goes either here, or if it doesn't get collected by this system that we're standing on, goes under I-70, the elevated portion of I-70, through Illyria and uh, Swansea, and into the South Platte River. This is the most northerly location where this water can be collected and discharged. It can't be discharged further to the south because it would have to flow uphill to do so and it's very difficult to pump or to otherwise handle stormwater flows of this magnitude by any artificial means. So it's got to be done by gravity and this is about the only place it can be. As you can see we're probably, I don't know, 50 feet above the river so this is the obvious place to, to do this. Then the problems start. The first problem is that in order to bring all this water to here, you have to have a series of pipes. And so they've got to extend through areas that are currently undeveloped, but they have all kinds of other infrastructure on them. So that's difficult. Worse, where we are standing right now is on top of a Superfund site. What is a Superfund site? In this particular case, this is an area that used to have metal smelting going on. So, and we are standing on a debris or a landfill that contains a whole bunch of, of waste, at least some of which is hazardous. And it has been placed here. This is not its final confirmation, but we are working towards a plan to finally inter this material, and that hasn't happened yet. The federal government has yet to do that. But, and this is land that is owned by the city, so the city of County of Denver's responsibility is to deal with the Superfund site. And that creates some real problems. Number one, Landfills are very poor foundation systems, very hard to build stable structures on landfills. And, and so we've been trying through our engineering department to create a safe outfall structure that won't wash away under these enormous floods that we're talking about. Uh, and that's very difficult to do. And at the end of the day, the, the structures that we put in here are probably not going to be as stable as they would be if we were building them on regular old dirt, sand, or better still, rock. Secondly, this material in here is hazardous, hazardous enough and has got a bunch of metals that we don't want to go into the river because it'll kill the fish or it'll make them difficult to breathe and will degrade the quality of the river. So everything we do here has got to, be, everything we dig up has got to be hauled away and put in a hazardous waste landfill someplace. And that's both expensive and it creates transport and other difficulties that we would rather not have. But to me, the worst thing about this location for an outfall is its safety. The 
bad foundation conditions, the very high flow that's coming in here is a sort of perfect storm. What it creates is a situation which is almost certain to fail. What do I mean by failure? I mean that the outfall will wash away or be undermined by the enormous floods that happen when you get a hundred year storm, like the one that happened in 1965 that totally flooded and removed all of the bridges from here. It's difficult as you stand here when it's not raining and it's dry to contemplate just how ferocious a major flood is in this area. But it is ferocious and we are exacerbating that by bringing water that didn't used to come here from all over Denver and focusing it right here on the worst possible location in Denver. Why is it the worst possible location? Because if it fails, if it erodes anything from here, it's eroding not just sand and dirt and concrete and stuff, it's eroding hazardous waste into the river, metals which fish hate, and it's going to go from here to Nebraska and it's going to be spread and then we'll be stuck with cleaning that all up. The metals are, uh, are the metals that came from the smelting operation here. They include arsenic, zinc, lead, cadmium. Those are the main ones. Those particular sets of metals, arsenic is very bad for humans and not very good for fish. Uh, zinc is okay for humans and horrible for fish, particularly when it's dissolved, stops them from breathing. Cadmium is bad for both fish and human beings, and not only fish, but all of the little organisms that they feed on in the, in the river. Um, lead is very bad, particularly for young kids, has major impacts on, on, uh, on intellectual development and uh, is poisonous in its own right, uh, as is arsenic. So, and then there are other things. There's a lot of asbestos in this, uh, in this uh, landfill. And asbestos form minerals going into the river uh, and being picked up by the, the aquatic organisms and by humans is also a, a major health hazard. So the consequences of a failure of this system would be that the city would be looking at a huge, massively expensive cleanups. Cleanups in Superfund sites typically cost in the tens to hundreds of millions of dollars. Once that decision had been 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 the main decision to lower the 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 the, uh, uh, the freeway had into a trench had been made, then a number of things. Okay, so we need to have protection against stormwater from all of this huge area in Denver to the south of the of the freeway, which it cuts all the way across. It protects the citizens who live on the north side of I-70, like in Swansea and uh, Elyria. And it also protects the, the, the newly uh, uh, approved expansion of the National Western Stock Show. It improves the new RTD, you know, storm protection for the new RTD uh, light rail development, which you can see just here in the background. That was the decision that was made and the city is going forward. The CDOT in a signed agreement with the city called the Intergovernmental Agreement uh, agreed to kick in as much as $58 million, or 40% of the total cost, up to $58 million. Since then, once they started doing the engineering, it turns out that the real cost of this is probably going to be somewhere in the order of $300 million. States kicking in a maximum of $58 million, so the city and county of Denver, the citizens of Denver, get to pay the remaining quarter of a billion dollars for this program, far north of what we thought it was going to be when this agreement was made. And this is a classic kind of cascade that a, a, at least an, a superficially reasonable set of, 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 of conditions, when we engineer them so we can make it happen, one thing leads to another, and next thing, you know, we've got 600, 
or 6,000 acre feet, oh, sorry, 6,000 cubic feet a second of water. Oh, we don't like the 6,000 cubic feet a second. Okay, great, let's collect some of it closer to the source of where it came from. Oh, let's, you know, so how can we do that? Well, we've got to do it on city land or we're going to have to do bad things to the locals. So where's the next nearest city land that we could do this on? Well, we can put the outfall on city land under this super fun site. We can put the detention system on city land at, yeah, let's use the golf course. Okay, great. And so on you go. And these, these decisions kind of cascade through the system till you wind up with what we've got in my opinion, a public, basically a public disaster. I mean, and it's a, a disaster right now in terms of what we lose, and it's a disaster in terms of the risks that we run of washing this entire Superfund site into the river if it fails. And it's likely to fail. I mean, it has quite a high probability as an engineering matter to fail. Have we done, as a city, any failure analysis or any mitigation analysis? No, we have not. And are we going to do it? Apparently, no, we are not. And so now we have a system where we're going to design something, we're going to put it in the ground, no failure analysis, no mitigation analysis, no consideration of how we would mitigate a failure, because really you can't. If we had to do this, then maybe you say, fine, you know, it is what it is. This is all we've got to do. Do we have to do it? Number one, if we don't keep the alignment of I-70 here, then we could turn this back into 46th Avenue, a major league boulevard, linking up with Brighton Boulevard, and we could utilize the existing freeways that we've got just north of here. What's, what's attractive about them? They both run along the, 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 the surface water flow system. I-270 runs along Sand Creek. I-76 runs along Clear Creek. So if you put a freeway there or expand them to accommodate the additional traffic, basically both of them are in current floodplains, so they can be expanded relatively easily, and neither of them cut off any surface water. Why? Because the surface water flows until it reaches, say, Sand Creek, and then it goes in Sand Creek and off it goes. You're not cutting off anything. So this I-70 alignment right here is the worst possible alignment for a freeway in a surface water flood system. And I-76 and, and I-270 and I are in the perfect location for protecting surface water flow because they don't do anything so they don't have to be put in. So the solution number one, don't drop this thing into a trench, turn it back into 46th Avenue. That'll achieve the reconnection of the communities. It'll liberate some land for development and put the trucks basically on the bypass they probably should have been in from day one. <laughs>